Greetings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and with Easter on the horizon, I thought it would be fun to take a look at some Pokemon Easter eggs. Now, I could have made this video a scripted one, where I went through and did research and then presented Easter eggs in a well-formatted format, but I decided it might be more entertaining if I just try to find them via the internet and react to both good, legit ones and stupid ones that aren't real. <laughs> we'll start with some that are sure to be legit because it's on Bulbapedia, pretty reputable source. Easter eggs are hidden parts of game or software that are usually discovered by more experienced players. There have been a number of Easter eggs throughout the Pokemon franchise. In the games, there are several items, locations, and events that are considered by some to be Easter eggs. So first we got the truck. This one I'd heard the lore of, like Muse under the truck but I never really experienced it myself because my first Pokemon game wasn't until Gen 3. A major Easter egg is the truck from the Generation 1 games. In Red, Blue, and Yellow, as well as the remakes, Fire and Leaf Green, I did not actually know it was in the remakes. There's a truck which appears in the SSN port, which serves no evident purpose except as scenery, with scenery being very sparse in the Gen 1 games, and this being one of the few sprites with no other purpose than to exist in one spot, fans began speculating that another purpose existed for this truck. Perhaps it could be moved with strength. Thus, a popular rumor sprang up that a Pokeball containing Mew could be found underneath. That's what I was talking about. The only flaw is that HM for strength could only be obtained after getting cut, which required the SSN leaving. Oh, so it'd be impossible to get there with strength normally. But there are ways to get around it. The first and most obvious was trading a Pokemon that knew cut. Ooh. The second involved getting the HM from the ship's captain, then battling a trainer and losing, having them run to the Pokemon Center without the ship leaving. Ah. The rumor was proven false. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about the HM's out of order strategy though. In the Gen 3 remakes, the truck is still present. However, there is actually something of a point. On its pier, if the player walks down a bit, they can find a hidden lava cookie, unavailable until later in the game at the Semi Islands. The truck had been positioned there as an Easter egg, due to the old popular rumors that were spreading during the time of red, blue, and yellow. That's fun. I had no, yeah, like I said, I had no idea it was in gen three and I like that they actually like put a hidden item there. Diamond dust. I have heard of this. It's a variation of the snow in, I believe just snow point. It allows battle without hail in areas where there is usually hail, which is Mount Silver. Wait, no, oh, we can do it on Mount Silver too. January 10th, 2008. Jinichi Masuda announced on his blog that fans should play Pokemon Diamond and Pearl on January 12th, his birthday for a surprise. The surprise was discovered to be sparkling diamond dust falling in Snowpoint City instead of the normal light snow. Interesting. It happens on Jinichi Masuda's birthday, Pokemon Day, Leap Day. Oh, it doesn't in HeartGold SoulSilver. Yeah, that's what they were talking about. The Ides of March, Onan Matsuri. I don't know what that is. Discovery of Mew. I didn't realize it happened on so many days. If we're looking at just platinum, nine different days. Wait, it happens on VJ day? And on Saro Natacheni's birthday? Saro Natacheni, I believe, is the voice of Ash, right? It is. Wow, that's that's cool. Wish they did that for my birthday in the games. Oh wait, they do! <laughs> in X and Y and in the Alola games. <laughs> ha ha, it is I, Grunty Boy. Are you all right? I'm feeling a bit Ugh, from lunch. The hideout cafeteria food is atrocious. I mean, you do work for a criminal organization. They're probably not following any health code regulations. Oh, why would you say that? Ugh. Anyways, it's so bad that I'm eating out all the time, which is both expensive and not good for me. I'd try cooking, but my knowledge and skills are, well, insufficient. Sounds like you should try out the sponsor of this video, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit that makes cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. They offer 50 weekly options of delicious meals to choose from, and it has options for everyone, including family-friendly, fit and wholesome, and quick and easy. I personally love the options they provide, since I often have trouble deciding meals for the week. A personal favorite recipe of mine is the creamy mushroom cavatappi. Well, that sounds fabulous, but like I said, I'm not good at cooking. Food, that is. I'm excellent at cooking up schemes. Fret not, my friend. HelloFresh saves you time, money, and stress with their step-by-step -step recipes that are super easy to follow. And the meals have pre-portioned ingredients, which dramatically cuts down on prep time and ensures you don't waste money on excess food. That lack of wasted food, plus their recyclable packaging and carbon neutrality, means that HelloFresh can provide you these delicious meals sustainably. Excellent! Exquisite, I'm on board, how do I get it? Use my link in the description or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGMNJTV16 for up to 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts across six HelloFresh boxes plus free shipping. All right, I'm off to do that right now. 
If I have to eat one more cafeteria meal, so help me, I will cry like a baby. Ta-ta! I feel like they do Diamond Dust and Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl too, right? Diamond Dust Weather Easter Egg appears in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. January 12th, the same day. Oh, there's Joe Merrick, Webmaster of Cerebi. Yep, there's the little sparkles. Another Easter egg in the games is Secret Wallpapers. Ooh. They can only be unlocked via outside resources in Emerald, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. A special phrase must be entered in game to unlock these wallpapers with the phrase depending on the player's ID number. Oh, is this like a Primo? Oh yeah, they mentioned Primo. That's how I got uh, those like secret eggs in um, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver for my no catching challenge years ago. A friend's wallpaper by telling him a word that will make his sick daughter laugh. Kind of sad. It's possible to unlock a variety of wallpapers with different combinations of background and patterns and cut. Oh, interesting. But only one can be unlocked at a time. Eight wallpapers can be unlocked in gen four. They're different between the different games. Okay. TV producer of Jubilife or Primo in Violet City. Yep, right, that's it. In Pokemon Stadium, when the player uploads a Pikachu from yellow, it will be voiced by Ikue Otani and have unique sound effects. Likewise, if a Pikachu or Raichu that knows Surf is used, it will have a unique attack animation. This animation also occurs in Pokemon XD and Pokemon Battle Revolution. Raichu's surfing. Oh, he's surfing on his tail! Like a Lolan Raichu. Pikachu gets a surfboard. Okay, that's cute. An Easter egg can be found in Super Smash Bros. Brawl while the player is playing in Pokemon Stadium 2 stage when the stage is in ice mode. If the player angles the camera and looks through the window of the cabin that Snowrunt is in, a poster of a pet cat? Can we see it on the wall? The cat was rumored to belong to Masahiro Sakurai, but he later announced that this was false. Pokemon Stadium and there's just a real animal? That's so weird. In Pokemon Play It, oh my God, Pokemon Play It? This is like one of the most obscure Pokemon games like ever, and I actually had it. It's like basically the virtual TCG, but just a like a computer disc game. Yeah, I had this. It like came with like, actual real life cards and the characters looked horrifying see what i mean my name is julie I'm hi a julie trainer just like you're you. from hell <laughs> look at these cards. guys soulless eyes <laughs> go. <laughs> i made a video a few years ago that was uh, forgotten pokemon games i don't know if it performed that well i don't remember but i talked about this game <gasps> only two decks are normally available fighting in water i remember those but if you could get the fire deck by using fire typing fire of the extra deck they're simply unlocked with no feedback or confirmation <laughs> what you have to type fire every time to get them to come back that's dumb what does the extra deck have? Now we're Googling. Pokemon Easter eggs. What's this first one? 10 sun and moon Easter eggs only true fans noticed. Alolan Nugget Bridge. In red, blue, and yellow, there's, okay, Nugget Bridge, we know what that is. If you return to Molly Garden in Ula Ula Island after defeating Guzma, you'll find that there's a bridge with five trainers who will battle you, and after defeating them, a veteran will reward you with a big nugget. Their dialogue and Pokemon are the exact same that is used by those characters from the Gen 1 games, only they're just playing an act. They aren't members of Team Rocket. Wow, I didn't know that. That's like, that's a good Easter egg. Lana fished a shiny Pokemon. Doesn't Lana make stuff up? She'll tell you that she once fished out a red Gyarados. No, doesn't she say like, I once fished out a red Gyarados and you're like, really? And then she goes, you would believe that, wouldn't you? Like, no, this is not real. She's lying. She There's like another version where she makes something up about like Kyogre. Alolan Youngster Joey. There's a Youngster Joey in like most games. You can find this gen's Youngster Joey at the trainer school. I mean, I guess Youngster Joey's kind of an Easter egg. It's just like, there's just always a Youngster Joey. Professor Kukui's body is ready. Excuse me? The catchphrase, my body is ready is probably the most famous quote related to Nintendo. Oh, that's right. That quote comes from Reggie. I forgot. He was giving a presentation of how to play Wii Fit. The phrase quickly picked up by the internet. It's one of the few memes of all that's still relevant today. I never realized that this was referencing Reggie. Incredible. Mario's overalls. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. That's pretty fun. Mario's overalls in one of the clothing shops. Howley Cemetery cutscene. I remember this. I triggered this. Once you enter the area, you'll see a Machamp carrying a woman who's paying respects to her late husband. According to her, he died due to an accident. It saved the same Machamp that's carrying her from dying by recalling it to its Pokeball. After hearing the woman's story, she'll give you a TM with the fling move. Very sad. Pokemon loves Stand By Me. There's a scene showing five boys walking down a set of railroad tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, there's that movie that I've never seen. In the first generation games in the remakes, the first 
first Easter egg you'll find will be hidden right in your house's TV. If you inspect the TV, you'll receive a message that states there's a movie on the TV, Four Boys Are Walking Down Railroad Tracks, which is a reference to the classic movie Stand By Me. In Sun and Moon, the TV in your room, if you inspect it, you'll receive a similar message. Several other characters also reference other movies, like a man riding a mudstale that yells, Hi-ho, mudsdale away! Referencing Lone Ranger, or Lily telling you she watched a movie about a man singing in the rain, which references singing in the rain. Yeah, Stand By Me is this film from 1986. In 1959, they go on a hike to find the dead body of a missing boy. Ah, so lighthearted and fun. I've never seen the movie. Maybe I should watch it because it's like a part of Pokemon history. So much so that they show an animated version of it in the gotcha special Pokemon music video from like a year and a half ago. This is a reference to Stand By Me. I think this is like the band members of Bump of Chicken, but walking on the railroad tracks is a reference to Stand By Me. And the fact that they reference it in the TV in the games. Too much water. Oh my God, I think I might, I think I've seen this. According to IGN, the games had too much water, 7.8 out of 10. It became a huge meme, we've all heard it. And if you use the Pokey Finder to take a picture and there's water in it, one of the random comments may say, 7.8 out of 10, too much water, shrugging emoji. <laughs> I love that they did that. Alolan secret switch. What? At this point, you'll have realized most Sun and Moon Easter eggs are related to Gen 1 games. Oh, the secret switch for the rocket hideout. If you explore around Hao Oli City Mall, you'll find a woman beside a poster that will tell you that there's no secret switch beside the poster, although this time she's telling the truth. And it's a tourist, so she must be from Kanto and known about the one in the Kanto game corner. Kangaskhan's lost child. One of the most common theories related to Cubone's origins is that this sad little Pokemon is actually a baby orphan Kangaskhan. Yeah, that's not real. Uh, we see in Pokemon Origins, Cubone's mother. Well, actually, no, that you know, the, the whole Cubone thing doesn't make sense because we see, you know, like in the games, Cubone's mother is a Marowak. Cubone's dead mother is a Marowak. But then in Pokemon Origins, there's the scene of the Marowak trying to protect Cubone and Cubone is already wearing the skull despite the mother not being dead yet. It's a, the, the logic of Cubone doesn't make sense. Well, the games have proven time and time again that Cubone's just a normal Pokemon species and that they can be bred without the need of getting rid of their mothers, some fans still hold the Kangaskhan theory. Game Freak is aware of this theory, as if you face a wild Cubone for long enough, there's a chance that a Kangaskhan will come to its side after hearing its cry for help. All right, the SOS calls, I forgot about that. All right, let's see what the Pokemon Wiki says. They've got a lot more of them. The player can use the move cut on tall grass in order to pass through. Is that a Easter egg or is that just a feature that none of us knew about? Because I did it by accident one time as an adult and it freaked me out. In fact, like you could mow an entire route. I just mowed this entire patch. <laughs> and like the game just like never tells you that you can do that. Okay, some of these are kind of confusing and not like verifiable, but in Hey You Pikachu, apparently if you say PlayStation into the mic, Pikachu becomes angry, representing Sony's and Nintendo's rivalries. That's fantastic. After a player defeats the Elite Four, if they talk to Don or Lucas on their birthday, they will wish you a happy birthday. That's nice that they know. Oh, wow, there's a bunch for the Alola games, what? Inside the player's room, there's a signed picture of the Thunder Badge. I didn't know that, but the player is from Kanto. There's a Switch. There's always the, the console of that generation in the player's room. All the previous consoles before the Switch are inside the Shady House. What? Well, the trivia page about the Shady House doesn't say anything about the other consoles, but it does say an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon upon entering the room directly north of the front door. There's a chance encounter with a Delibird who briefly comes down the chimney and into the fireplace before disappearing into the chimney again, making an allusion to Santa Claus. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so fast. That's amazing. If the player brings a Pokemon from gold and silver, yes, via the virtual console, the Ultra Sun Ultra Moon shows it to the Game Freak Morimoto in the Game Freak building is what it meant to say. Explain how in the past, the development team had trouble making gold and silver, but eventually got the help of Satoru U Iwata. Morimoto then explains he went on to start a big company, referencing how Satoru went on to become the lead director of Nintendo. I didn't know that story, but I think it's cool they tell it in the game. Inside the Pokemon Trainer School, there's an interactive book inside called The Three Little Trial Goers. The book features three Pokemon, a Pikachu, Slowpoke, and a Pukumuku. Inside said book, you can choose the ending of how the three Pokemon go on their trial. In one of the endings, the three Pokemon set off on their trial. This book may seem unnecessary, but these three Pokemon can be seen throughout the game. The first time you see them outside of the book, they can be seen in Pikachu Valley up on a hill. However, these three Pokemon sadly come to a stop when all three of them can be seen inside of Lusamine's frozen trophy room all clustered in their own group. What? Perhaps you'll see this plucky trio somewhere in Smile. There's the Slowpoke. 
Puku Muku and the Pikachu. What the hell? Side note, how come Lusamine's like icy room is uh, never fully resolved? Like how come we never get to see those Pokemon thawed out and like still alive? I would like that. The theme for the Ultra Wilds is a reversed remix of the opening theme that plays during the Welcome to the World of Pokemon cutscene. Wait, really? Okay. Oh, I can kind of hear it. Has anyone reversed this? Reversed. It's slower, but that is indeed like the same melody. Wow, that's crazy. What a cool thing. After defeating Lieutenant Surges, Jimmy gives you his autograph on the Thunder Badge, like how you have an autographed Thunder Badge or whatever it is in uh, Ultra Sun and Moon. In the Pokemon Mansion, if the player takes Mewtwo or Mew to the splicing machine on the bottom floor, they will stare at the machine doesn't happen with any other Pokemon other than these Mewtwo and Mew. Ooh. A group of three psychic trainers that appear in Lavender Town are named Aaron, Danny, and Ross. This is most likely a reference to the members of the game group, members of the YouTube channel Game Grumps? What? Aaron, Danny, and Ross. Are they aware of this? Speaking of internet figures getting a nod in an official Pokemon game, Joe Merrick, webmaster of Cerebi.net, Three years ago today, although this was tweeted back in 2017, so this was eight years ago, we found first evidence of the Cerebi Poke Earth map being in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, which got confirmed on the fourth. To this day, it still blows my mind that something created for Cerebi made it into the games, regardless of why. This is the Poke Earth map that, I don't know if Joe Merrick specifically made it, but some people involved with Cerebi made many years ago, like I think during Gen 4, as evidenced by the fact that Unova is not on here. Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, the Sevi Islands, Ore, and then I think these are Ranger locations. And then as you can see right there, in a house in Moss Deep City, there's a map on the wall that's freaking Poke Earth. So that's freaking crazy. Wonder if something I make will ever end up in an official Pokemon game. I doubt it. Pokemon, 10 Easter eggs for those who have played the games at CBR.com. I'm not optimistic about this because CBR has made some stupid garbage clickbait articles that I have fallen for in the past. It was like, Captain Marvel dies and like has a picture of Brie Larson's Captain Marvel. And then it's just talking about the comic book character the male one that died before the female one. And it's just like, this is clickbait garbage. So let's see what they have to say. The Snorlax Barricade. Fans of the Pokemon game will know to all, yeah, yeah, Snorlax blocks things. The fan favorite Snorlax in Fire Red and Leaf Green. They only mentioned Fire Red and Leaf Green. And Detective Pikachu and other Snorlax can be found asleep in Rhyme City blocking a different path. Catching a Caterpie. Fans of the games will know that there's a bit of hierarchy when it comes to catching a, okay, this is like, you are you are really stretching your words here. While players start off with a choice of a companion that they are given, they must then work to catch their own Pokemon and build their squad. This article is for people <laughs> who have played the games. <laughs> we know. In the early days, it would be Pokemon like Caterpie, which would turn up and be easy to catch. In true fashion, Ash's first ever effortless catch was in fact a Caterpie like so many other players before him. That is not an Easter egg. <laughs> That's just Ash catching a Caterpie first. Did you know the anime is based on the games? Ho-Oh's appearance, the original episode of the Ash anime series also had the first on-screen appearance of Ho-Oh, the legendary Pokemon. What's interesting about that is that the character had not actually appeared in the games yet. Supposed to be part of Gen 1, but then they ran out of room. This legendary design was moved to Gen 2. The original anime series has Misty as a companion to Ash. It's a big dream to one day become one of the best water type trainers in the world. Fans of the video games will be aware that Misty's ultimate dream really comes true. She becomes the gym leader of Cerulean City in her home city. Players actually have to defeat her if they are to go on their victorious journey. <laughs> this is one of the dumbest things I've ever read. They're acting like the games are based on the anime, but no, the anime is based on the games. Misty the gym leader was first. <laughs> then the anime, oh my God, I can't. What other stupid stuff are they saying? Cubone's dark secret. Fans will be aware of the dark secret that Cubone carries with them. The, it's their mother's skull. A small detail for fans paying attention. That's one of the most well-known pieces of Pokemon lore in the world. <laughs> this is not an Easter egg. Like the only one they've mentioned so far that's maybe an Easter egg is Ho-Oh. 
An alternate timeline. Is this about the mega timeline? Okay. I mean, I guess that's kind of that. Uh, Maybe an Easter egg that there's the mega evolution timeline and the not mega evolution timeline. Dawn. It's not very often when a playable can. No. <laughs> The Easter egg is just that, hey, this character, Dawn, from the show, it's the playable character in Diamond and Pearl. Wow, May did that first. <laughs> Who wrote this? Dawn is a character that players can actually become in new line for some reason, the Pearl and Diamond generation. The Pearl and Diamond generation? <laughs> she becomes an incredible skilled trainer by the conclusion. Getting his steps in, another reference to Detective Pikachu now, and this one not only links back to the original video games, but also the Pokemon Go mobile game that once took the world by storm. And in an offhanded comment, Pikachu says he's walking around to try to get his steps in. They'll recognize the task of walking around to try and hatch eggs in both the game itself and in Pokemon Go. It's a minor reference, but fun one. No, that's just referencing people who like have those fit bits. A wild Drifloon. I need to notice something quite disturbing. In the game, Pokedex suggests that a child that touches a Drifloon will actually go missing. In the background of an episode, it's clear to see an unfortunate child playing with a Drifloon in a very dark twist. Is there no photo of the episode? And the last one, iconic Game Boy sound. In the 2019 anime series, often returned to as, referred to as Journey or Pocket Monsters, it's just Pokemon Journeys. As an interesting addition to the opening credits, sometimes they include the classic video game sounds. A fun throwback reference for fans. Gotta say, the craziest Easter egg in this entire video is gotta be either that Misty is a gym leader or that Dawn is based on the player character. Like, whoa. <laughs> Don't look at articles by this site. They're, they're clickbait garbage. Thank you so much for watching with an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you want to help support me the same way, the link is in the description below. And if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big events. Gotta catch them all.